Welcome back to Sueyverp's Let's Play. Uh, last time we came back from the end, but I never actually showed what we recovered while we were there in terms of loot. So in these shulker boxes, we have a lot of gear, a lot of diamond gear, some iron gear, all enchanted with some mix of great and awful enchantments. We have 46 shulker shells still remaining uh, unformed into shulker boxes and a spare elytra. Uh, which we also enchanted along the way. And then we collected 10 diamonds, 22 gold, 20 iron, which we don't really care about now that we have an iron farm, and a few brewing stands with potions. Of course, the dragon's head, dragon egg, a couple of horse things. And then, you know, just some blocks along the way that we got from the, the end cities as we were raiding them. Now, what I've got going here is uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to get to work today on that storage building. So I've laid out an outline, which I'll show you from higher up in just a minute. And uh, it's going to be mostly stone brick. However, the roof is going to be made out of mangrove wood. Uh, lovely new wood type, but yeah, I've not used it a lot and I'm looking forward to it. However, we only have 35 mangrove logs so far, and that's not enough by far. So I've gone ahead and planted a bunch of propules. These are sprouting up over here into nice giant sized trees. So we'll start chopping on those to get the materials we need. And uh, yeah, let me climb up high so you can see a bit better what this build is gonna look like. Well, I got up to the top of my scaffolding and it started raining, but you can still see the outline. It's 45 blocks long. 14 blocks deep, and there's going to be a 9x9 nine nine tower right there at the front. Uh, as you can tell by where the dirt goes, this building is actually taller than the top of our hill here, so we're going to have to do some terraforming, make it work out. I've started a little bit of that down low here, and uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how it goes, but uh, I'm really excited about this. It's going to be a gigantic building, and I think it's going to look really nice up on top of this hill here. So that no matter where we are, you know, down here chopping wood, over there getting some crops, maybe working on another building one of these days, uh, we'll be able to look up and see this lovely building on top of this hill. So it'll be uh, up here with great visibility and also easy access when we're flying to and from getting storage supplies. Of course, now the next thing, which uh, I've begun to realize is I don't have a lot of gunpowder. So we'll have to figure out you know, how to get maybe a mob farm going in the next few episodes here. But for now, we'll keep working on this building. All right, this is coming along really well. I'm loving the way this looks. So as you can tell, we've got the walls in all the way around. Uh, still need to poke a few holes in the back for windows. And you can tell from the ends that this roof is going to go long ways across the building. That's going to be primarily mangrove planks. Um, since that's a solid block on top of it um, we're not going to have stairs or slabs which means that it's going to be spawnable that's not great uh, right the, the build that i got this um, inspiration from was done in creative from somebody on youtube who uh, did just, is a really did a really great job is a very good builder and this is one of multiple buildings uh, that that builder did i'll link to it in the description but uh, in creative, you don't have to worry about spawns. We're going to, however, uh, need to worry about spawns. So my current thinking is that what we'll do is we'll use glow lichen and we'll bone meal a bunch of glow lichen and use that to block spawns because now with light level zero being um, necessary for spawns, it's going to take less than it would have taken under previous conditions. And so it should work out. I'm not really exactly sure how it's going to look, but we'll give it a shot and see how it goes. Uh, but it's great to have storage now that uh, is a bit more centralized and organized. As you can tell, the, the chest monster has gone away. Uh, we'll fly down here and you'll be able to see we've got a bit of organization. Things just put, you know, like I said, all in one place which makes it a lot easier to find what we're looking for and organized by various categories. This is not the final place where all these chests and shulker boxes are going to go, but it's at least a place now where uh, I can come to, to find things and to put things away when I need to empty my inventory uh, or you know place to, to get set up to start a new project. So we're gonna put a, a floor in, or I guess from our perspective, a ceiling in 
uh, that will be the floor of the second floor and there's also going to be a third floor or a loft up top. Um, this tower, I haven't entirely decided what I want to do with it yet, but um, it'll sort of intersect the, the, the second floor. Um, and so we'll see how that turns out. Um, but yeah, it's coming along great. I'm really loving uh, the big entrance up at the front. I did start terraforming the hill, but uh, not really satisfied with it. If you come down this direction, it just looks too uniform. You can see how the lines are, are, are straight. Um, it doesn't look natural because of that. And also, I think it would be good to have a bit more uh, of, a, of a space up at the top where it's, it's kind of flat before going down. Um, so work on that a little bit more, maybe after finishing the building. But uh, yeah, I, I did like that the, the entryway is, is a large opening rather than having doors uh, that you have to walk through and open each time. Uh, this will make it easier to fly in and out and uh, altogether just make it uh, a simpler process uh, than you know when, when you're approaching from a distance with a lot of speed, uh, that'll be it'll be a lot easier this way. So really loving how this is turning out so far, and I'll bring you back once more progress is made on it. I figure it's pretty pretty boring to uh, to watch somebody build. Oh, before I let you go, I just wanted to point out as well. I I really like how these um, upside down stairs and up there right side up stairs uh, just give a little bit more character to what otherwise would be a very large flat wall. Um, so adding some windows, adding some details like this. Uh, really do make the build more interesting and um, not just you know a large box, which for a build like this is a is a bit of a risk because it it is essentially a giant rectangle uh, with with a square embedded in it. You know it's it's not uh, got a lot of shape going on, but it does help to have a variation in height. So this tower up front, uh, the roof is going to be significantly higher, uh, and adding things like windows and these indentations as well as things like texturing blocks. So changing out some of these uh, stone bricks for mossy stone bricks or for cracked stone bricks. Uh, this is something that we'll do later on to just per, you know, create some variety, some variation in the, in the walls. But anyway, we'll see how that looks uh, in a little bit. I'm trying to decide if I like the slab view, slab or stairs better. It's a little bit hard to get a good angle where you can see both um, you know, without flying far away and coming back. So I do like that the stairs are going to block spawns. Slab view is interesting though too. I, I say slab I'm, when I mean planks. It's an interesting look because it is flatter, but it kind of fits with the, the barn style of the building. Something to think about. Not sure yet. I've decided I do like the planks rather than the stairs for the roof, so I'm going to go back through and rip out some of what I've already done. But uh, all together, yeah, this is turning out quite well. I'm going to uh, complete the dormer windows in the front by adding some stairs and um, planks that uh, kind of make it stand out a little bit further and then put glass in those and haven't decided what I'm going to do down lower for the windows. Right now they've kind of got a, a placeholder view of fences just to see how this looks. Uh, obviously I've put in a roof in this area so, it, so the floor to the second floor which we'll give you a peek of right here and that is jungle wood and then above that is dark oak planks and yeah i really like the color contrast between the stone bricks up here the mangrove wood color and the dark oak it's just really it's a nice rich set of wood colors uh i would probably use spruce for this floor down here but i don't have any spruce i've not come across a single spruce tree in this world so We'll have to go exploring because you can't do without spruce forever. Got to go find some. Uh, but for now, I think the next step is not to go look for spruce 
but instead to come up here, I've already started ripping out uh, the stairs, like these couple rows here, and replacing them with planks. So let's just continue doing that. In fact, maybe I'll just do that from the from the inside. It'll be easy. Yeah, there we go. Easier to reach. This was one reason I went ahead and put the floor in before finishing the roof because now it's just easier to access everything. Um, and then up here, I'm actually going to put stairs that go this. Oop, not that way. Stairs that go that way. Not like this other one either. So we'll do that one. And if I can, oh, there's, I forgot I put that dirt there. So I could climb up a step here. Uh, that. And then this. I believe at that point, I'm going to put a couple planks here. A uh, plank here and here, and then a stair there. Is that right? Let's see. Yeah, because that gives us a nice solid area to work with from the inside. So over here, then we need another stair way up here. No, the stairs are so finicky. Kind of, there we go, like that. Yeah, yeah, that's going to work. That's going to work. Okay, so that means that every one of these is going to have planks out front. And then, not that one. These are going to be plank. Or is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, second plank. Stair, wait a second here. That's right, right? And then is that another plank? I feel like something's missing. What did I do over here? <laughs> uh, okay, so it's another plank, another stair, another stair. So stepping up and then stepping down. What did I do over here? Oh, I see. Yeah, so this needs to be further back. So this stair is here. Then we put this back. This one then is here. This one steps back a step with another stair. Nope, there, like that. That's that's what I need to do. So there, here, these become planks. This one's a stair. There we go. And then over here, more stair stepping down like that okay so they join with each other whenever the windows are side by side but not on the ends and then there there here plank plank there there here right and we have more stairs in our shulker box here. Brought this with me because I knew I'd need more. Got a little of everything so that we don't run out. All right, that one, I almost put it here. This one, that one. All right, let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, apart from that one misplaced stair, that's looking, that's looking great. I love it. All right, I'm going to keep on doing that. I'll do that with the other windows on the other side of the roof, uh, the, the left side, as well as on the back side, which I haven't gotten to yet. And then I'll bring you back in a little bit, and we'll see how it's looking. I also probably want to put planks around here. Does that make it too deep? 
It's pretty deep. Hmm. I'll think about that one. All right. Be back here in a bit. We done. We've got the roof put on. And just about finished. A little bit on the sides, not yet done. But uh, these little bits on the top are done. Put some windows in. And I put windows down at the bottom on this side and fences at this side just so I can see which one I like. I'll leave them both there for a while. And then make a judgment call after that. Got the dormer windows all finished up. And the floor inside needs to be done still. It's just grass, just grass not perfect. Uh, and not really decorated outside yet. Not done sort of texturing to the, the stone bricks themselves. And I'd like to put, I don't know, some flower beds or something out front. Uh, terraforming still to do. So yeah, a lot still remains, but also made some modifications that I just wanted to show you real quick. Like I said, the roof's just about done. And I added a little access way, a little staircase up here. And then uh, that takes us to the, the top floor. But then I'm going to also put in a little kind of half spiral staircase to here, which will give us a little platform up top with a, a good view over uh, you know our, our domain and uh, door access out onto the roof. I think this will be especially useful if we just want to come up here and look around or if we want to land here and make our way inside the building from the top. That will be pretty easy to do. So, yeah, it's good progress. Good progress. Before I update you on the progress on the build, see this little blue bobbing head over here? Yes, this guy, this guy. His buddy came by a little while ago and sold me some Podzel, which I, I readily and gladly bought because I still have not found a taiga or spruce trees anywhere. And then, then afterwards, this guy comes around and look what he's selling. Spruce saplings. I will take, I'll take six of them. I don't, I realize, you know, I could just do with one and that would be enough to get more, but we have plenty of emerald, just not a big deal. So that's exciting. We finally have spruce. Now we can, uh, now we can get more of the wood types. We're still... Uh, we don't have acacia yet. We've not found any place that uh, that has one of those savanna biomes. Uh, so still missing that one. We've got dark oak, birch oak, mangrove. We've got jungle. I think we're good otherwise, right? I'm probably missing one. Am I missing one? I think that's all the woods. So we're missing acacia, which not a big loss. They're hard to... They're hard to grow, and uh, the wood color is not all that interesting, in my personal opinion. Uh, I know a lot of people hate on birch wood too, but at least they they grow consistently and straight. And they're, uh, yeah, you can plant a lot of them, so you can get a lot of wood. But you know, really, spruce trees and jungle trees beat those by a pretty long stretch in terms of the amount that you can get because you can do the two by two. Anyway, um, oh yeah, I put a little uh, little spot here to keep some couple chickens just to get some eggs. It's not really for, for food right now. I don't have a particular purpose in mind, but it's always just kind of nice to have some eggs on hand just in case, you know, later on want to use them for something. Uh, so sort of passively just collecting eggs. And yeah, now I'll give you a little bit of a tour. As you can see, there's these, these columns and pillars right here that make this entrance uh open up to the next level which which just feels more grand right now we're on the back side of the building but from the front uh feels a little bit more grand and i've been trying different floor types because i'm having trouble settling on exactly what i want obviously grass was not the long-term solution uh so we've got some stripped uh mangrove wood here which it's just a little bit overpoweringly red uh then we've got regular mangrove wood and then we've got oak wood uh, oak is a nice all-purpose all wood, but I really like how the mangrove, it, it has less contrast between 
you know, the darkest and the lightest. So the, the oak, the lightest of the colors uh, is lighter than the lightest in the mangrove wood and the darkest of the colors in the oak is darker than the darkest colors in the mangrove wood. So you, you have less contrast, which makes it less of a distracting floor. Uh, just kind of intense and busy as you're moving around on this one. Um, and then I've just done some, uh, what are these, uh, smooth stone in the middle just to see. I kind of like it for the entryway and like cutting a path through, but I really don't think it's going to be you know, the whole floor. It's a little bit too too bland, too gray. Um, and then I tried, <laughs> tried a pattern with our uh, different stone types didn't want to go with with deep slate just because it's so intensely dark um, but this one also feels too busy so of all the ones that i've got going on on this side i think what i'll probably do is strip out uh, the other two wood types and leave the regular mangroves so i had to do a bunch more collecting of mangrove wood so that we could get this going so i'm just going to come through here and pull these out and i like the pattern we've got going here with the mangrove. I'll carry it back underneath the, the chest. I just wanted to see how it looked, which is why right now it's only a partial partial pattern here. But uh, this sort of checkerboard pattern makes for an interesting interesting look once it's all in there. It's I, I like it better than just going straight one direction, um, you know, in long in long rows. So yeah, I'll carry on with this. I'm, I won't do it all right now, but I do, I do like this, this uh, kind of patterned floor, and we'll see how it feels once we've got, you know, the whole thing in. I haven't decided if I'll keep the strip down the middle or not, but I will, will replace uh, both sides with this mangrove wood, um, as well as pull this out um, and put that in there as well. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you was uh, I've got a little bit more of a theme going on for the other side. So we come in from the front, oh, coming on nighttime. And I've added some lighting on the outside. Decided to go with the mangrove fences on the lower windows. That way you kind of get a better tie-in from the bottom to the roof. Um, so nice mangrove accent colors, a little bit of decoration here and there. And then over on this side, uh, a little bit of room for animal pens. So maybe some horses, definitely some horses, maybe cows, although cows are so noisy. <laughs> Maybe, maybe not, maybe one or two, uh, and then we'll keep the rest out where we've got them right now. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, but I did use some coarse dirt, went exploring and found, this is the muddy mangrove roots. So I found a, a mangrove swamp and I was gonna I was gonna get some frogs, I was pretty excited about that. And then I realized I didn't have any way to breed them and I didn't have any leads. So I couldn't bring them back with me and I also couldn't uh, collect the tadpoles and get them to uh, lay frog spawn and uh, hatch into tadpoles and you know, scoop those up with a bucket. So instead, I just had to do the next best thing, which was grab a few blocks from around there because it was a pretty big mangrove swamp. So we'll have to go back sometime and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll record that uh, just to get some little frog action going. Um, but then coarse dirt and, uh, and the, the muddy mangrove roots kind of mix in something else maybe the puzzle uh that's actually why i bought the puzzle puzzle was to, to put that in here and then yeah and then on this far side what we've got going on is a, a little mine shaft and by little i mean it goes all the way down to like i don't know negative 54 or something with a bubble column elevator right here uh and the idea is just quickest way to get down to the the diamonds and rather than going on the long journey that we've had to do previously through uh, some caves this direction. Now we'll just get down to an area where we can do a little bit of strip mining or I don't know, maybe something down the road like fight the wither in the down in the deep slate um, layer. Uh, we'll see. I don't I don't really know. There's hasn't been any um, what are those cities, ancient cities in this area uh, that nobody able to find. So right now it's just a solid deep slate with a little bit of you know, goodies mixed in, uh, no real big caves, not, no ancient cities or anything like that, uh, not come across any mine shafts or anything interesting uh, along those lines. So, yeah, just to kind of represent that this end is where we've got the, the mining corner and the access to the mine shaft. I thought, you know, this is just sort of placeholder blocks. I thought we would instead 
put some valuable looking blocks here. So this is the, the only ancient debris I've got so far. Um, maybe, maybe we set it out so it feels like we're, we're, uh, we've got it on display um, and do the same with some of these other blocks, right? We've, we've gathered some gold. We're doing a really uh, heavy emerald business right now, trading with villagers. Let's toss some of that out here, throw some of these other valuables in the mix. Uh, we have some raw iron that we found from before, uh, even though we've got iron kind of now coming out our ears. A little bit of copper here and another gold block, although this one being the deep slate gold, it just kind of looks nice. Uh, so yeah, maybe we'll throw a diamond block in there too, but it'll be a way to, for us to see that little reminder at the end of this section of the building. Oh yeah, that's that's how you go, go down to the mine shaft. Uh, and then I'll put another floor in here. Maybe the mangrove wood, maybe not. Uh, just little decorations on this side. And I'd like to remove some of the torches. So we've got some lighting up top here. And one nice thing about bedrock that I really like is light goes through slabs. So uh, these these top slabs here, like they're not going to spawn proof anything, but we don't really need it to spawn proof anything because the light from this block down below it is shining up through. So all you have to do is just lower, um, go one block down, put a torch or other lighting block and uh, and then cover it up. And the light level in this area shines as though the torch was you know, where it is, just one block below here. It doesn't block the light from passing through. If we replace that with a solid block, then it would block the light and we wouldn't uh, get that effect. So we can't really do that over here, that's maybe one reason to keep this uh, strip down the middle. As you can see here, we've got some some torch action right there. But yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, maybe just the lanterns up on. Oh, I should probably put some chains. These are too high. Um, maybe that'll be enough. But so far, uh, I've not had any real problems with spawns that have wandered into the building. Um, just to, to give you a look from outside of, oh yeah, ignore, ignore that little platform off to the left. I'm opening up that side to see what it would be like to have like a little balcony or something, a landing pad over on that side. But um, I did go ahead and continue putting the glow lichen up on the roof to block spawns up here. And I did have a couple of mobs spawn, but then identified where they were spawning from and added glow lichen to that area. So We'll just keep an eye on it. So far, it's been good in the last several nights that I've been in the area. And you know, you got to remember for the the spawn to happen, it, you've got to be out a certain distance away. Like there won't the, the game won't spawn a creeper three blocks away from you, right? You wouldn't have time to react, and it would just <laughs> explode. Um, but it but it, they'll also despawn if you get really far away. So uh, there's there's that middle ground which is pretty commonly like when i'm working down here um, things would start spawning up top and uh, because this is far enough away because the building is tall enough you know if i'm down in that mining corner messing with stuff like we just were if this were spawnable then we would see some you know zombies or skeletons or creepers up top here and that's because they're not going to fall off of this building it's too far too far of the, for them to fall so they're just going to stay put um, and we would be able to see them. So I think it's working so far with the glow lichen. And yeah, I did a little, little bit more terraforming on this hill. We'll do a little bit more at some point. But man, getting the amount of mangrove wood we've needed for this floor is going to be it, it. It was it was it was a lot of chopping. Uh, so I like mangrove wood. It's pretty cool. But oh no, ha! Ah. I didn't keep the pattern. I'm going to pull that back up again. I thought I was doing it the right orientation, but I wasn't. So let's do this so that I remember. Anywho, uh, I think I won't make you watch me put in a floor. Uh, we'll come back with that in a little bit. All right, time for a grand tour of the final, final product of the building. Well, we've got a couple of flower beds out front now, and I've reorganize the storage so that uh, it's all categorized. We have different wood types going over here. 
We've got uh, a variety of items that we've labeled and put in item frames. And over here, a bunch more stuff along with uh, shulker box storage. And this is some of the original storage. So this over here is empty, still you know, moving it in here. But little by little, uh, it is coming along. And I also went back and got Mr. Piggy, who I don't think I've mentioned that we named uh, before going off on that original adventure a while ago. But now he's got a home here, so glad to have him in his spot and safe and sound. Upstairs, a couple things to show. One is that we've got now our stuff ready for setting up a potion area, potion brewing stand, and all the materials necessary. And then on this side, the enchanting setup moved inside. So that used to be out kind of in the front yard, and now, yeah, much better home for it here. And lastly, I just wanted to note up here that we finished off the, the floor up here. I think at the last time I showed this, it was dirt. Uh, so this is now looking better. I still need to hang like a, a lantern or something, get rid of the torches. But uh, nothing really... Oh, hello. Uh, nothing really on this third floor other than apparently where the wandering trader lives. Didn't, didn't see that coming. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, it's coming along pretty well. Definitely feels great to have additional space to store items and uh, leaving it at this. I think that'll wrap it up for this episode. So definitely recommend this building. It's a great, as you can see from the second floor, uh, place to have sort of a, a mix of uses, a kind of central place for all all purpose, uh, you know, home base. So shout out to... Audrey for the original build idea and the the kind of structure, the bones of this building. Great build, love it quite a lot and looking forward to expanding in, uh, in new and interesting ways that kind of make it our own. So thank you all for tuning in and we'll catch you next time. Sweet Verp out.